Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is going to be the update to the Off Balance Templar. This is the Magicka Templar for the Harrowstorm DLC. This has been used a lot in the past, it's had updates almost every patch for the last three years almost. And it's just getting stronger and stronger. Now the whole purpose of this build, yes it does have a design and a purpose, um, is to supply a good amount of single target damage, actually very high, a really good amount of error of effect damage at the same time, rather than just being one or the other, and above all, this allows room for buffs and bonuses to your group, but without you having to do anything extra. All you have to do is keep up your rotation, and you will benefit other people's sustain, damage output, and healing received. So, let's go into the basics first of all. We're going to go into the stats. Now, we need to pop a potion for this to make sure we've got everything running, so it's all nice and shiny. We are on 38k max Magicka. We are on 18k max health, which is actually pretty huge for a Magicka DPS. 10k max Stam, 864 recovery, but don't worry, that's going to go up massively. We're just short of 3k spell damage, but that will go higher with our bonuses, passive skills, and glyphs. We've got loads of stuff going on there, but that shows in combat, not so much on a standalone player. We're 64 points into max Magicka, stage 4 Vampire, and we're using flat food, max health, max Magicka, and Shadow Mundestone. Now, the food itself is quite straightforward. Max health, max magic, blue food. Don't need anything else. If you want to use recovery food, go nuts. It's entirely up to you. But you honestly don't need it with this particular build. If you do ever run low, you're either doing something wrong or you're missing some buffs and bonuses in your group and you may need to heavy attack occasionally. But don't worry, that's going to be inside the rotation and that will all make sense later on in the video. So, cheap food. I'm going to go into the skills in detail. I'm going to explain how every single one of them works, where they come from, what morph you need to get, and how they're applied and how they actually benefit the build. But if you already know this, of course, you're welcome to skip. But just remember, if you do skip, you may miss out information. And I won't be repeating myself in the comment section below if I've already answered the question that you ask. Now, first up is Purifying Light. This is in a Dawn's Wrath skill line. Third ability you unlock starts off as Backlash Morph. It's a Purifying Light. Now, this will do an initial hit, so it will actually do damage when it lands on the target. You can put it on multiples, but it's actually single target damage. Over six seconds, it will copy 20% of all the damage you do to the target. And save it up, and pop at the end and explode. Now, the maximum damage copied has a cap. That depends on your buffs and bonuses, by the way. You can enhance this a little bit, but whatever it ends up as, it can't go any higher. Now, you can crit this now, so technically you can get more damage out of it. But the base amount, which you crit off of... Won't be any higher than what it says in the tooltip at the time. So just bear that in mind. Just keep doing damage as long as this is active. And it will do really, really high damage when it's finished. Also, as an added benefit, when this has popped, it will put a healing circle down on the ground and heal you and your allies every two seconds for six seconds. So it's a very simple skill, really. You just apply it, do damage, and let it pop and heal everybody. Really handy. Beast Trap is next. This is Barb Trap, actually. This starts off as Trap Beast in the Fight Skill skill line. Last ability you unlock, morph it to Barbed Trap. This is very simple. You put it on the ground and it pops underneath the target, immobilizing them if they can be immobilized and not if they can't. However, once it's activated, it will do damage over time for 18 seconds to the target affected. And while that damage persists or while the ability is running, you will actually gain minor force, increasing all of your critical damage by 10% for the whole duration. So this is your crit damage buff. Although the physical damage isn't going to be massive for us because we're specced into Magicka, this does benefit us a massive amount because we do want to get that crit damage. Templars excel at crit damage. It's really important that you make use of this. Next is Radiant Oppression. Now, this can be morphed into one of two things. This is in Dawn's Wrath, by the way. This is your main execute. It's the last ability you unlock. Starts off as Radiant Destruction. Morph it to Radiant Oppression or Radiant Glory. Now, here's the difference. This will put a beam on your target and do damage over time, over 1.8 seconds, constantly ticking and doing very, very high damage if the target is below 50% health. Now, just bear in mind, of course, although it says under 50% health, 50% is the bare minimum before it starts really getting stronger. It gets much, much stronger the lower the health is. So if you want to take advantage of this as a 
kind of valid DPS option versus your main spammable during execute. You need to make sure they're fairly low to take full advantage of that. If you do it too early, it will be weaker than your spammable. So on trash and ads, you want to use this at about 40%. On bosses, maybe 35 to 30%. But you obviously want to make sure you keep using it until they're dead. It's really, really strong. Now, this particular morph does up to 20% more damage depending on the proportion of your current Magicka pool that is left. So if you have 40k Magicka, 50k Magicka, 80k Magicka, it doesn't matter. The point is how much of your 100% is in your bar right now. The more Magicka you currently hold in your overall 100% of your bar, the stronger this will be. The lower your current Magicka in terms of how much is left, then of course this benefit or bonus won't be quite as strong. So if you're really bad with your sustain, this might not even work out for you because your magicka might be so low at execute that you're not actually getting the bonus at all. If you're really good with your sustain, then you're going to get the most out of this and it will do very, very high damage. The other morph of this actually heals you every single tick of damage you do for 20% of the damage done. So if you go and crack out a 100k tick, that's 20k back on a heal. And it's really fast ticking as well. So the other morph I would personally recommend for everyday use, even in trials as well, because during execute, that's when it's really stressful and you're taking the most damage. You can have your heals down from this ability at the same time as having a heal from this every single tick just for trying to kill it. But the choice is yours. If you're really good with sustain, you don't die too often, your group is really, really capable of keeping you alive, all that kind of stuff. Sure, go for this one. If you want to keep yourself alive and still do really high damage, pick the other one. The differences between the two is actually minimal if your resources are low. Bear in mind, this particular version requires you to have high resources at the time to benefit from the bonus. If you don't have high resources, both of them are going to hit about the same. So that's a trade-off. It's entirely up to you which one you choose. Again, I would recommend Glory, but if you can have really high sustain and survivability, this one is going to do a little bit more damage. Next up is Inner Light. This is very, very simple. Mage's Guild skill line. Where is it gone? It's not that simple. We can't find it. There we go. First ability to unlock starts off as Mage Light. Morph it to Inner Light. Ignore all that stuff there. We're not going to use it because that's for PvP, making people visible. All we want it for is this at the bottom here. Max Magicka is increased by 5%. And you gain 10% increased spell crit chance. That's what the, uh, the digits at the bottom mean. I know it says 2191. That is confusing, but... It's 10% chance to crit. All you have to do is slot it. So for that bit on your bar, that's the bonus you get. Don't press it. Just leave it there. Next is Puncturing Sweeps. This is our main spammable. It's in the Adric Spear skill line. First ability to unlock. Starts off as Puncturing Strikes. Morph it to Puncturing Sweep. Now this does damage every single stab that it does over a channel time of one second. And... It doesn't just hit the target in front of you. It will hit that one for the maximum amount of damage that this can do. But every single stab will also hit enemies around the frontal AoE of your character as well. For less damage, but it will hit them too. So this is a very strong single target ability as a spammable. But it's also a very strong AoE as well. This also actually slows down the enemies for one second for each one actually hit by the strikes. So that's not massive for PvE, but it is a benefit nonetheless, so things can't run away that much. And this is the big one. You heal for 40% of the damage done with this ability. So every single stab that you do to the enemy, or enemies, multiples, will heal you for the damage done of 40% of it. So if you have one enemy, pressing this and stab, stab, stab will heal you per hit. If you have 20 enemies in front of you, it will heal you per hit on each enemy. It's very, very hard to die in big clusters of adds. It's a really powerful ability. Make sure you utilize this as your main spammable. And you have to be close, by the way. It's only got close range application. I mean, it is 8 by 6 meters, which is fairly large. But you can't sit at the back of the room and use this. So just bear in mind, this build is designed to go up front. Next is shoot and start. This is not really used at all. But we do have it on the bar for passives. This is from the Mages Guild skill line as well as uh, Inner Light is. You don't have to have it if you don't want to. But if you do get this, you'll need Mages Guild level 10. It starts off as Meteor Morpher to shoot and start. Now, this is a Meteor that flies out of the sky, then leaves a damage over time on the ground. 
It is cheaper than our main ultimate, but we only have this here for stats. However, if you are in a no-shit situation and you do feel like you need to throw out an ultimate because the enemies are either almost dead or you don't have enough ultimate for the back bar one and you're in trouble, you can fire it. And every enemy that you hit with the initial landing of the meteor will give you 12 ultimate back. Now, they did change this. It used to be capped at 81, so if you could fire this on 20 enemies, it wouldn't make a difference. You'd still get only 81 ultimate in total back from the initial hit, but it's no longer capped. So, if you hit 10 enemies at once with the initial landing of the meteor, you'll get 120 ultimate back for the privilege. It's nuts. But again, this is in oh shit situations or maybe trash situations or whenever you don't have enough ultimate for the back bar if you need to use one at the time. We technically use our back bar ultimate as much as possible but there are situations you might get away with using this now next up is harness magicka this is in our light armor skill line you gotta have five pieces of light armor on in order to activate this or even use it at all so make sure you've got five pieces but this basically gives you a damage shield yes the strength of the damage shield is scaled off of your max magicka but it's capped at 50 percent of your max health so obviously the higher the health the larger the shield can be it lasts for six seconds, absorbs this amount of damage. Depending on your buffs at the time, it can go higher. And if you get hit by magic abilities, you actually get magicka back as well. Obviously, if the shield is stripped, however, that bonus goes away. So if it's light attacks that are not very strong at all, then of course you can benefit from this three times. If it's a big hit, then it's gone once and you get almost 200 back. Use this when you're in trouble. This will help you survive and you can heal from underneath it by stabbing stuff. Next up, of course, is Unstable Wall of Elements. This is in Destruction Staff skill line. Second ability to unlock. Starts off as Wall of Elements, morph it to Unstable Wall of Elements. This particular one is Wall of Shock because we're using a Lightning Staff. But that will change depending on the elements you use. Now, this is very simple. This goes on the ground and does damage to all targets caught inside of it every one second. And as it finishes, or if you reapply it, it will burst and do a massive area of effect damage. Now... This does have its own bonus. Because it's lightning damage that we're taking advantage of, this will do, of course, shock damage because we're using a shock staff. However, this has its own bonus. Every single element has its own bonuses. This particular one, if you concuss an enemy, concussion is applied by chance by doing lightning damage, by the way. Concussion applies minor vulnerability to the target, meaning that all of you and your friends do 8% more damage to the target. So lightning damage is actually very, very healthy to help buff your group. However, if you concuss the enemy, if you're lucky enough to do so, and they are in this wall of elements, or if this wall of elements applies concussion and they're still inside of it, you will knock them off balance. While the target is off balance, they will have that debuff for 7 seconds, and then once it's gone, they will be immune for 15 seconds. That is for all enemies and players. However, during that phase... Anyone that heavy attacks that target will get double resources back. Anyone that heavy attacks an off-balance target that is not a boss will knock down the target and stun them. And they will still keep the off-balance uh, debuff on them until the time expires. You can get a damage bonus while the targets are off-balance if you have your champion points in certain areas as well, which I'll explain later. This here is our bread and butter skill. This gives... The enemy minor vulnerability giving your group more damage. It applies off balance giving your group more damage and sustain. It double dips into two really nice areas. Also one more thing that is very very important. Not only do you get double resources back if you heavy attack an off balance target. But you do 70% more damage from the heavy attack. Next up is Solar Barrage. This is in our Dawn's Wrath skill line. This is the second ability to unlock. Starts off a solar flare, morph it to solar barrage. Very simply put, you activate this, it lasts for 10 seconds, and it will do damage in area of effect around you every 2 seconds. And while it's active, all of your light attacks are empowered, meaning they all do 40% more damage. This is an incredibly strong ability. You must keep this up at all times. Next is inner light again. Now this is a flex slot. You can change this. We've got inner light on both bars so that we have the max magic and crit bonus on both bars. But if you don't want to use this and you feel like you're a little bit squishy, you can of course go into the restore and light skill line, unlock channeled focus. Starts off as rune focus, morph it to channel focus. This is incredibly powerful in terms of resistance and sustain. Not only does it give you major resolve, increasing your physical resistance and spell resistance by 5280, which is a major buff type by the way, you can't stack those. You also recover 240 Magicka every one second. 
recovery is calculated every two seconds so we've got 480 extra recovery here on top of our 864 or whatever it was now also this is the only buff that will boost major resolve for standing in the rune itself you will actually benefit from increase on that skill or on that buff even so your 5280 will actually be 50 percent stronger so you are very very tanky while standing in this rune and you have stupid recovery as well this lasts for 20 seconds so it's got really good uptime if you want to you can swap out your inner light on your back bar for this keep it up as and when you need to or all the time the choice is yours but i would recommend it it's very very strong indeed now next up is blazing spear this is our adric spear skill line fourth ability unlock starts off as spear shards morph it to blazing spear this is also very straightforward it's a ground-based aoe and this will do an initial hit of magic damage and then do damage every one second to all enemies caught inside of the air of effect allies however can take the synergy from this and they will restore 3960 magicka or stamina depending on which one of the two pools is higher for them this is an essential skill to keep up for your damage output and at the same time your groups sustain so you can see a kind of pattern here already this increases the damage your group does to the targets by applying concussion if you're lucky and then off balance which in turn will increase their heavy attack damage and their heavy attack return of resources and this also returns resources so these two skills are applying bonuses to your group in both either sustain or damage or both finally of course thunderous rage now this is called thunderous rage of course because you're using a lightning staff this will change depending on what weapon you're using but it's elemental rage essentially so that's off as elemental storm morph it to elemental rage now the lightning benefit is that you get two extra seconds on it this is a massive error of effect damage over time destruction skill and it just nukes rooms it's insane so make sure you use this ultimate all the time not shoot and star unless you really really have to or unless an opportune moment arises where there's just so many enemies you know you're going to get it back straight away sometimes you can actually fire off two of these or one of those and one of these depends on the situation that's for you to gauge bear in mind of course this does lightning damage which means it can stack alongside this to apply extra concussion we've got two lightning abilities that both contribute to the potential of gaining off balance now I'm going to go into passives. This is very, very straightforward, but you do need to understand these because passives are some of the strongest skills in the game. Now, increases your critical damage by 10% and this increases your damage done to blocking targets by 10%. And this is for having an Adric Spear ability slotted. So as you can see on the front bar, there's one. On the back bar, there's one there as well. Both bars, 10% increased critical damage. And this does stack with our beast trap increasing our critical damage because this one is minor force which is a buff type this one is a flat bonus minor buffs and minor buffs or major buffs and major buffs of the same type do not stack minor and major do and either minor major or whatever and flat stats do this does stack with what we've got this will grant you minor protection for six seconds reducing the damage taken by eight percent all you have to do is activate an Adric Spear ability. So while you are doing your stabs, you gain a six second protection bonus. When you cast this, you get a six second protection bonus. We have minor protection in our rotation 100% of the time, except during execute. And that is without having a skill specifically doing that. Most people have a very unique skill to gain this. We don't need it because it's built in. When you deal damage with an Adric Spear ability, you have a 25% chance to deal an additional 1850 physical damage or 5067 magic damage, whichever one of the two is highest. For us, it's magic damage, so we benefit from that. And this can occur once every 0.5 seconds. All you have to do is do damage with this or damage with this. Now, this ticks every one second. This jabs multiple times every second that you cast it. Every single hit from both of these can contribute to this, and it's a really high amount of damage on your overall damage output for your character. You must get this passive. This increases your weapon damage by 6%, which is not that important for us, although it does actually benefit our Beast Trap a tiny amount. And it also gives us a spell resistance bonus as well. Now, that is obviously important because we do want the resistances. Dawn's Wrath, of course, is very important as well. 
Increases the duration of your Sunfire, Eclipse, Solar Flare, and Nova abilities by two seconds. So any abilities that we're using from this skill line are increased, except for this one here, and except for our Jesus Beam, of course. But we are using this. This will benefit us. And if you don't have Ice Comet or Shoot and Start, you can, of course, put Solar Prism on, which is originally Nova. And this will put a large Sun-type visual on the ground, which will do damage over time. And anyone that takes a Synergy can actually activate a massive damage burst and knock all the enemies down. This also applies Major Maim, which means any enemies caught by this will do 30% less damage. So this is a bit of a flex slot, but have it there just in case. And if you don't have Major Skill 10, makes sense to put it there. But that is increased as well in terms of duration because that applies to this passive. Cast of Dawn's Wrath ability will give you three ultimate, and this can happen once every six seconds. So for casting this, or this, or this, you will actually get three ultimate back as long as it's within more than six seconds in the last time you cast one of the abilities. So it's quite handy. This will give you and your group minus sorcery for 20 seconds for using a Dawn's Wrath ability. And that is an increase to 10% spell damage. So you saw that we had um, 2.9k 2 spell damage to start with. We don't because we use Dawn's Wrath abilities all the time and that will actually increase. So this also is very simple to apply. All you need to do is one of these or this or this. And since we're keeping up this and this all the time, easy. 100% uptime on 10% increase of spell damage. Reduces the health, magic, or stamina, and ultimate costs for all your abilities. I don't need to explain that one. Reduction to cost for everything. Get it. Restore and light. You won't need all of these. This increases the healing effects from your restore and light abilities by up to 12% in proportion to the target's uh, severity of the target's wounds. You won't need that. While standing in your own cleansing ritual, rune focus, or rite of passage areas effect... And for up to four seconds after leaving them, you'll gain minor mending, increasing your healing done by 8%. That's actually very beneficial to us and also increases the amount of damage you can block for the duration. So basically, all you need to do is stay in this room. If you leave it for four seconds during the, that time, you'll still benefit from that passive. But if you just stay in it, you'll always get this. Very handy. This is not important to us because we're not using any of these. So don't worry about them. Resurrected allies will return with 100% more health than they usually would when you resurrect them. And you have a 50% chance to gain a soul gem, or fill a soul gem even. So you have an empty one with you, and you pick someone up, you might fill it up. Which means that gives you back the one you spent. Pretty handy. Now, destruction stuff passive, you're going to want every single one of these. They're very, very important, of course. This is essential. This tells you what the shock staff does, and people don't pay enough attention to it. When you do a heavy attack your shock staff will do damage to the target that you hit and all enemies surrounding the area will actually receive 100% of that damage. So they all get hit for equal amount roughly depending on whether you crit or not on the main target because the main target can be crit and the surrounding targets cannot. But the base damage that you do, crit not applied, will hit surrounding enemies and it's really strong especially when things go off balance and you get that 70% increase to your heavy attack. If you have a flamed staff, of course, you will do increased um, heavy attack damage, but we're not using one, so that's irrelevant. And of course, you don't want this if you're using the frost staff because it taunts the enemy. The one you want to look for is the shock staff because we're using shock on both bars. Yes, you can switch your flame staff on your back bar if you want to get the extra damage out of the wall of elements from its own unique effect. However, I would not recommend that unless you are in a group where your off balance is definitely already covered because that is your job for this build is to supply as much off balance as possible if there's loads of it already you don't need to be doing it if there isn't no flame stuff for you keep the lightning on this will go through enemies resistances by 10 percent for destruction staff abilities only so wall of elements light attacks heavy attacks this will increase your chance to apply burning concussions chilled status effects remember concussion gives minor vulnerability inside wall of elements that creates off balance this increases your chance to be able to do so because we're using the destro staff on both bars so even if we swap bars we never lose this passive now we are using two lightning staves like i've already said we have one single target ability well technically two we have this and this everything else is aoe our main spammable is aoe our ultimate our ground aoe our solar barrage our wall of elements everything is area of effect now, if you have a flame staff, yes, your Jesus Beam is going to be stronger because the passives here means that you have an 8% increase to single target abilities that will be stronger. But you will lack your spammable 
and your ground base dots and your area of effect dot here. So you'll gain a benefit from one skill, two here technically, but you'll lose on everything else that you do, which is your bread and butter of your overall rotation. Now, the test that I've done with them, flame staff on the front or lightning staff on the front, the numbers have came out to be exactly the same on single target. Because what you lose on your AoE skills, which does affect the target you're hitting, you gain on the beam. Then when you take off the damage for the beam with a flame staff and replace it with a lightning staff, the damage you lose with a Jesus beam, you gain from your spammables and ground-based AoEs anyway. So the damage is the same. But it makes more sense to benefit from the lightning for two reasons. One, because your lightning staff heavy attacks are much, much easier to sustain, being a channeled ability. And of course, does splash damage in area of effect to benefit damage output-wise to hit surrounding targets. And while we're on that note, the second reason is because the more enemies you can hit for higher damage, the quicker they go down and the less time you have to individually fight each one. So we deliberately use an enlightened stuff on the front bar. 8% increase to all area of effect. That's this. It's this. It's this. And it's this. And your ultimate. And not the initial hit, of course, but the actual area of effect of the whole thing. So the damage over time on the ground. So we are an AoE build with the ability to do massive single target as well. Did I miss a passive? I think I did. Yes. Finally, if you do kill anything with a destruction staff ability, you'll get 3,600 magicka back. That includes your lights and heavies. Now, we are using five pieces of light armor, so you want to make sure you get all of these passives. This will reduce the effectiveness of snares put onto you by 4% per piece worn and reduce the cost of sprinting. This will increase your mag recovery and reduce the cost of your magic abilities. This will increase your spell resistance per piece worn. This requires five pieces and gives you 10% crit chance. And this requires five pieces and gives you 4884 spell penetration, which is absolutely nuts because you do want to get through the target's resistances to do more damage. And all you have to do is wear light armor to do so. Very strong passive indeed. We're using one medium armor piece, so you only really want two of these. This one will increase your stam recovery and reduce the cost of stam abilities, which is obviously very important because we are using one stam ability here. And this one here will increase your movement speed if you sprint and reduce the cost of dodge roll. I know it's only a minor bonus because we have one piece of medium, but 3 or 4% of something is better than 0% of nothing. So these do help you, but this one here and this one here above all. The rest of them, this one is not required because it needs five pieces. And this is fair if you really want it, but it's not essential. And this one's useless. You don't want weapon crit. You could get a small crit bonus towards your beast trap damage if you really want to, but it's a lot of points to spend if you don't have them. Heavy armor, of course, you do not need these two. They are five pieces um, only. So we don't have five pieces of heavy. We have one. So get these. This will increase your physical and spell resistance. This will give you the constitution passive, which will give you health recovery, but that's not really that important. However, above all, you will get 108 magic and stamina back once every four seconds per piece for getting hit. That will actually help you, believe it or not, quite a bit. And this increases your max health by 2% for the one piece worn as well. This is quite important. 10% increase to magicka and stamina recovery for being a stage two vampire or higher. And if you go below 50% health, and you will, for being stage 3 or higher, you will actually take up to 33% less damage. You get tankier the lower your health goes. Or less risk, let's put it that way. Now, I am always a stage 4 because I can't be bothered to mess around with it. But you do get this one at stage 4, which makes you sneak faster. Some content that's helpful, some of it is not. But for me, I prefer stage 4. If you want to change it and do something else, it's entirely up to you. And if you don't want to be a vampire, you don't have to be. But there are two very beneficial bonuses here. Make sure you get them if you are a vampire. They are very strong. Fighters Guild, you will need these. This is Intimidating Presence. It reduces the cost of your Fighters Guild abilities. We're using a Beast Trap. We want to get the cost down, especially since we are a Magicka build. This will increase your weapon damage by 3% for each Fighters Guild ability slotted. You don't have to get this if you don't want to. But for the very small damage output that this has, that will contribute. This one you do want. When you kill Undead, Daedra, or Werewolves, you will generate 9 ultimate per kill. It has to be you that gets the kill and blow, however. This will increase the damage of your Fighters Guild abilities. Again, this is minimal. It's very, very low. But versus Werewolves, Undead, or um, Daedra, this will do more damage. So if you've got the sk spare skill points, then go for it. If not, don't worry about it. Mage's Guild, you are going to want to get these passives if you have these abilities on your bar. But the one you're really looking for is this one. 
This increases your max magicka and mag recovery by 2% for each ability slotted. So as you can see there, we've got Inner Light on the bar, which gives us 5% already. We've got Shooting Star on there, which gives us nothing. But both of them do count as Mage's Guild abilities, and they do both give us this. So actually for sitting there, they give us an extra 4%. So it's really handy. And on the back bar, we've got the extra 2. Undaunted is essential, of course. If you take a Synergy, you will get 4%. Max Health, Max Stamina, and Max Magic back. Every single synergy in the game is beneficial. It will give you a shield, a heal, a bonus, a buff. Anything that you pick up is going to help you. Don't leave them on the ground. Pick them up. And for doing so, as well as whatever the hell the synergy does, you will get 4% of your resources back, which is really good for your sustain. Now, I see lots of people not picking up shards. The ones that we actually throw, the blazing spear. And they say it's for the tank. It's not just for tanks. It's for everybody. And if someone needs one, all you have to do is ask. This rotation alone, there's one being thrown every almost 10 seconds. So once someone picks it up, they're on a 20 second cooldown anyway. So it's fine. Just throw another one. Also, what is the point in humping a dummy all day, picking up a shard every 20 seconds, if when you're in combat, you're not actually going to pick one up? Pick up the synergies. This increases your max health, stamina, and magical by 2% for each different type of armor worn. We're actually wearing three different types of armor. We're wearing five pieces of light armor. We're in one piece of heavy and one piece of medium. So across the board, we get 6% to all our resources, which is why our health and magic are so high. Stamina is not bad, but our health and magic is especially high. Um, 18k health for a magic DPS without any buffs on is pretty healthy. Now, we are, of course, a high elf. We didn't change that. When you activate a class ability, you restore 640 magic or stamina based on whichever is the lowest. For us, our stamina is lowest. So we use a class ability. Once every six seconds, we get stamina back. We're using one stamina ability. We don't have a very big bar for it. We do need to block dodge roll and all that good stuff. We want this to be sustainable. Every six seconds, just using something as simple as this, will give us stamina back alongside of our basic stam recovery. It's really, really handy. When you are using an ability with a channel or cast time, you take 5% less damage. This here has a channel time. This here has a channel time. Now, the stuff on the back bar does not, so these are insta-cast abilities. But while we're doing our spammable or our execute spammable, we are protected with this bonus. Very strong. This increases our max magic by 2k, and this increases our spell damage by 258. That is really, really handy. This sustain bonus and damage reduction here alone, especially giving us the major protection from our Adric Spear passives as well, is, is pretty handy. Now, you can choose any other race you want, really. It's entirely up to you. Every single race has different passives and bonuses, but you may have to kind of jiggle some stats in your actual character to close the gap in some areas, if you like, or just use it for cosmetics. It's entirely up to you. But the High Elf did top out for this particular build. Now, the most important passive in the game, in my opinion, you're going to get bored of this, medicinal use. When using potions, the actual duration of it will last 30% longer. Now, we are using spell pots, which would give us uh, major sorcery, major intellect, and major prophecy. They normally last about 36, 37 seconds, but instead, for us, they last 47.6. That means that the cooldown being 45 seconds, we can actually have the potion running 100% of the time without fail. Never use a potion just because you're low. Use a potion all the time. They are consumable buffs. And what have we learned so far for playing as long as some of you have played? Don't let your buffs run out. Now we're going to go into the gear. Now just bear in mind, of course, this setup doesn't require any trial loot whatsoever. But you can choose to use some if you prefer. There is a slight difference, but I'm going to go over that in a moment. So first of all, what you need to get yourself is an overwhelming lightning staff. Imprecise with an increased weapon and spell damage glyph on the front bar. Now this is very important to note. Although farming weapons can be a pain in the rear because RNG... There is an element of that with everything in the game. The last boss in Tempest Island does actually drop her own named version of this staff. So although you might pick up lots of different weapons from this set and not get the one you want, that particular one does drop from that boss. So if you're lucky and you can get her to drop it, there's your lightning staff sorted. Now, this is very important. This gives you max magic, spell damage, spell damage again. And when you deal damage with a class ability... Remember, we're using a lot of class abilities and we're using one for a spammable. 
You have a 33% chance to surround yourself with lightning, basically. And this will actually hit enemies in front of you, doing shock damage every one second. For six seconds. And the range is eight meters. 15% of the damage done will actually restore Magicka. So if you hit for 1k, 15% of that is being returned to you in Magicka. If you hit six targets, that happens six times. And it can last for six seconds. And it can be reapplied again instantly as long as you're using a class ability or dealing damage with a class ability. So all you have to do is keep up your rotation and this will fire. In area of effect, add pulls if you like, if you're spamming your abilities, it's almost impossible to run out of resources. Absolutely insane. Now on the back bar, we are using the Maelstrom Lightning Staff, of course. If you don't have this, you can double bar this if you have two of them. Or failing that, you can put on a Willpower Staff or something to that effect on the back. Or even a Crafted Weapon if you prefer for the time being. But you want this to be infused, you want a shock glyph on it, and you want to make sure that you understand how this works. It's very simple. While your Wall of Elements is down, you can concuss the enemy. While they're concussed, they go off balance. If you heavy attack something, you will do 70% more damage to that target because they're in an off balance state. This adds to light and heavy attack damage on top of all that if they're in your wall of elements. This is a flat bonus to your heavy attack as well. So yes, it adds to the base of it. And yes, you can crit on top of it. Now, it's not critting this particular tick or hit itself or increase the increase goes on top of how hard you would hit with a light or a heavy and then you crit on top of it like you would a normal skill we are using zan for the helmet and shoulders but you can change this if you prefer so you want this in heavy and medium helmet and shoulder in any order it doesn't matter magic on all of them divines on all of them this gives you spell crit so we've got a higher crit chance and when you damage a nearby enemy with a light attack or a heavy attack you have a 20 percent chance to basically attach a beam of fire to them which does damage every one second and each second it gets 50 percent stronger it's got a fairly long cooldown but it's actually really really strong and has been for a stupid long time i don't know why they haven't reduced the damage on this yet but they haven't so keep using it five seconds up 13 seconds down now you don't have to use this if you don't want to but this is very good single target if you want to focus on lots and lots of area of effect, then of course you want to go Grofta. This is much, much easier to get as well. This will give you a max magic bonus. And when you deal damage, it will put a circle around you of fire. And each second that this is active, it will do damage in area of effect. And yes, your lightning staff does increase the damage of this, giving you an 8% increase on top. Five seconds up, five seconds down. All you have to do is do damage. Really easy to proc. Now the main set we're using is still surprise surprise hollow fang now let me explain to you what this does while someone screams in your ear this is a healer set because it is not this has spell crit healers and dps benefit from spell crit this has max magic we benefit from that so does a healer we have spell crit again we've already seen this healers and dps benefit from spell crit it's all chance now read this very very carefully whenever you critically heal or critically damage a target you spawn the ball of hemoglobin at their location for two seconds and the ball explodes restoring 3k magicka and applying minor vitality to you and your allies within six meters of the ball for nine seconds increasing their healing received and this can last for nine seconds so every nine seconds just for doing critical damage you can make this fire once Give your whole group, if they're in range, 3k magic back and give them an 8% increase to all heals that they receive. By the way, this does stack with your minor mending, which gives you an 8% healing done. So while you are stabbing things with your puncture and sweeps, this can fire, give you magic back, give your group magic back, give you a healing bonus. That actually makes the jabs heal return stronger as well. So this is not only really good for our overall dps because of the flat magic and the two spell crit bonuses but also the sustain is absolutely nuts 3k over nine seconds taking into account of course we actually count our recovery every two seconds is the equivalent of roughly i think it's around 666 every two seconds now if you have more than one of these and here's the game breaker they stack so that becomes 6k magic back every nine seconds with a healing uh, bonus, which doesn't stack, by the way. That's minor vitality. Minor vitality and minor vitality don't stack. But the, the restore does. 
So that's not 666 anymore. And if you have another one, it stacks. On my live streams recently, we actually did a trial and we had four of these running at once. It was impossible to run out of Magicka and people were still cracking 80k DPS in content. This is a very, very strong all-round set that benefits everybody. We are doing damage. It fires from damage. It gives us magic back. We don't struggle for sustain and neither does anybody else. I don't know what else to tell you. Also, if you want some tips for this for certain content, yes, in Sunspire, this will go underneath the dragon. It's a bit annoying. But the good thing is most people don't really struggle with sustain on the dragon because they go hell for leather. The dragon goes down by a set percentage and he flies off and the ads come out. That is when you get in the face of the ads and this spawns exactly where you want it and all the sustain that you just burnt on the dragon comes flying back ready for you to kill all the ads. So although in one situation of the fight it's in the wrong place, once you get to the part where it really counts, it's where you need it. And if you're in Sanctum Orphidia and you're on the Magical Bomb at the end, just note by the way you can step out of this to not give yourself Magicka back on purpose or you can simply take this off and put something else on for that particular fight. Just bear in mind, of course, you can get this on normal, so you don't have to panic about going in vet. This comes from um, Moongrave Fane on normal. is a lot, lot easier than vet. Go in there with a few friends, get what you need, and get out. Good thing is you want it on five pieces all the time, so you can just want the body pieces. Or jewelry, whichever works for you. Now, the traits and everything is precise on the front, infused on the back, divines on everything, and then one bloodthirsty, two bloodthirsty, in fact, and one infused on the jewelry. Spell damage on all. The other option is you can swap out to Sororia if you prefer. Now, you will have a good spell damage bonus, just like you do on Overwhelming. You'll have a magic bonus, just like you do on Overwhelming. You won't have a 5% increase to damage um, on Overwhelming, but you do have a spell damage instead on that one, so that kind of trades off. It's not exactly the same, but they're not far off. You'll have an extra mag bonus if you have the perfected version, and you won't have it if you don't. Now, the difference with a five piece is that this one will do lightning damage every second and give you magic back. This one, however, will just increase your spell damage and it will stack up as long as you can stay in the circle to do so. So, your skills will be stronger rather than your procs doing some of the damage. This actually, as far as trade-off goes, is not far off. On the dummy, you can hit anywhere between... We're going top out here. Anywhere between 77 and 79 with Overwhelming. And Sororia actually averaged around 77 to 80. So there's not much in it. So if you want to go for the trial stuff and you can maintain it, go nuts. You'll enjoy it. If not, overwhelming, you're never going to run out of magic. It's absolutely amazing. So this combination of these sets here are helping apply more off balance because it's lightning damage. Keeping your sustain up. Giving a healing buff to the group. Giving sustain to the group. And giving you really nice crit chance and flat damage as well. The combination of everything combined is flat damage in single target, flat damage in AoE, resources back for you and your group, healing back for you and your group, minor vulnerability to the group, off balance to the group. You see where we're going here. All you need to do is do your rotations and all of this will apply by itself. Now, we're going to go into the champion points and I'm going to explain the rotation. You're going to see how simple this really is to do. So, red stuff is the same as every other build. 72 in Ironclad to reduce the amount of direct damage you take. You can change these, by the way, depending on what content you're in. It's entirely up to you, but this is a good starting point. Um, 64 points into Hardy and Elemental Defender to give you a 13% reduction against pretty much everything. 51 into Thick Skin to give you a 90% damage reduction to all damage over time. Don't forget, we've got Unchained. We are using a stamina ability. If you break free, put down a Beast Trap, it's 80% cheaper. 90 points in Quick Recovery to increase your healing received. Yes, that does stack with minor mending and minor vitality from your holofang this is a really nice bonus we res 20 percent faster than everybody else and give people back more health and could get a soul gem and while you're resing you take 15 percent less damage 44 points into warlord to reduce the cost of break free 75 in tenacity to return 14 percent more from our heavy attacks don't forget during the off balance phase that's really important um, because you'll get double back to start with and this contributes this will increase your recovery by 14%. And we want 72 into Tumbling to reduce the cost of dodge roll. We will have to do that quite a lot. We want to get the cost down, especially since we've got a lowish pool. Four points into Shadow Ward because all I've got left and they're not going anywhere else. But the benefit of this is that we have 75 in this tree, giving us the Treasure Hunter passive, which means your farming is going to be a little bit less um, stressful, hopefully, because the chests that you loot will have higher quality items in them. 61 points into Elfborn to increase critical damage by 21%. 49 into Elemental Expert to increase your... For Flame, 
Frost, Shock, and Magic damage. 10 into Spell Erosion to increase your Spell Pen. 9 for your Staff Expert for Lights and Heavy Attacks. And 66 into Master of Arms to increase the damage done from all your direct damage. Bear in mind, by the way, your Burning Light passive, your Spear when it first lands, your Puncturing Sweeps and all that good stuff, they are direct damage. You get the Butcher passive as well for having 75 points in here, which means your Light Attacks at low health will do 5% more, including your Heavy Attacks as well. Remember, we've got Empower, so we do actually have a 40% increase on those, so Execute, your Light Attacks are insane. 75 points into Thermoturge to increase our damage over time. We do have a lot of damage over time, so this is very beneficial to us, especially for our Jesus Beam and our ground-based AoEs. However, 75 points in this tree gives you a 10% damage bonus to anything that is off balance, and we are supplying that. No brainer. Now, rotation. Very simple. So, when you get into the fight, you want your beast trap down. You gotta make sure that's on the ground. Very simple. Now, go to your back bar. Make sure your potion's running at all times. You want your spear down. Then your light attack. Soda barrage. Light attack. Wall of elements. Swap bars. Pretty straightforward. Front bar. You want to use... Where's a minion? We'll bring this minion over, actually. Come here. We'll use him. Front bar, you want to start with light attack. Purifying light. Then, you want to go light attack, jabs. Three times. Then, light attack, beast trap, swap bars. That's it. Every single rotation, that's it. So, let's recap again. Light attack, spear. Light attack, solar. Light attack, wall, swap. Light attack, purifying light. Light attack, three jabs. Light jab, light jab, light jab. Light attack, beast trap, swap bars. Don't change it. Now, when you get to 40% health of trash adds, you might want to hit them with a Jesus Beam. When you get to 35 to 30% 30 of the boss, you replace this with this. So you do three of those with a light attack between each one. Stop using this unless you need it. And stop using your solar barrage unless you need it. Basically, your execute rotation will be spear, wall, three Jesus beams with light attacks. Spear, wall, three Jesus beams with light attacks. Now, if you want to put in the heal or you want to use other stuff in between, you can do, but it will lessen your overall DPS, but you'll still hit very, very hard. It's entirely up to you. When you fire an ultimates, by the way, make sure that you put your ultimate down before your wall of elements and then swap bars. Because if you do it quick enough, that first kind of half second or second wind up won't actually apply until you get onto the front bar. So, this is what it should look like. Off balance straight away. Easy. That's all you have to do. And never change it. Until it's execute time. We'll just pretend that it is for now. It's going to be low damage anyway. And you'll do that three times. And then Beast Trap Swap and start again. Now, just bear in mind, of course, if you are struggling with your sustain, which you shouldn't be, you can Heavy Attack to get your sustain back. And it's very easy to do with a Lightning Staff. But keep an eye on the off balance. So if this target goes off balance, which you'll see in a moment, the debuff above his head will be dark blue. There it is. So easy to apply with this build. Heavy attack it. You'll get more damage. You'll get double resources back. Once it's gone, you'll get standard resources back. Because you've got that dude standing there looking really obnoxious. You see that um, debuff there? That's an immunity phase. Now, it's a quick screenshot to demonstrate the output that you should expect if you have a really solid rotation. This one is with Sororia. With Overwhelming, you can actually get about 2k under this, roughly, if you've got a good rotation. Just bear in mind, of course, if you start slipping on your rotation or spend too much time trying to figure out what you're doing, your numbers will drop. Now, it is going to be a practice thing, of course, but the two different variations are so close, you don't even have to go into trials if you don't want to. But since I'm assuming that you want to hit that kind of number, then you're probably doing trials anyway. But you don't have to, like I said. Now, just before I go, um, I said about Ice Comet, or Shooting Star, in fact, losing its um, cap 
So it doesn't have 81 ultimate back anymore. It just gives you 12 ultimate back per target. There's 33 dummies here. So I think, I don't remember exactly. I think it was 33. Here's, an, uh, here's a shooting star. Full again. So if you have loads and loads of targets. Just saying. That's fun. Anyway. Hope for the help. Hope that wasn't too boring. Hope you now have a better idea of how to approach this particular build if you haven't seen it before. And if you have seen it before, hope you're not actually disappointed because for most of you, nothing really would have changed. It's still solid and it still works as intended. So, first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. If you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. And don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so that you know when I upload videos. Also, if you'd like support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website zynogaming.com, and I live stream every night on Twitch from 10 p.m. UK time, unless I say otherwise on Twitter. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.